Good morning, guys. It is Friday, and it's a cold one. Got a little frost on the pumpkin on old Squeaky here. However, it's supposed to be a really, really nice day. Temps are supposed to get up into like 37. So uh, let's get this day started. <laughs> So before we get going too far, I just started pulling out of my driveway and all my dash lights and the radio went out. No radio, no dash lights. And notice my headlights are on. So I think we might have another electrical problem. Damn you bubbles. So before we head to work and try and figure out this electrical problem on bubbles, I've got to drop off a check to my buddy Dale at his towing business because we owe him some money. And I was hoping to show you Dale's new tow truck. He's got a new Ford, looks like an F350 or 450, um, with a ramp on the back of it. So I don't see it here. He might have it in the shop. He might be out on a call somewhere. But anyways, back to work, see if we can get this POS working. happened to mention that when all the interior lights went out in the radio the heat went out with it too well they did freaking cold dude As you may have noticed on that time lapse, we've got a new arrival here on the lot. We've got this 2015 Mitsubishi Mirage in this wonderful Barney the Dinosaur color. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do with it yet, whether we're just going to sell it through the auction or try and sell it on the lot. The color kind of has me scared. but. The fact that we have that means we sold the Fiat 500L. So it is still early yet. So we've got a half an hour before the shop opens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out this Malibu and bring in bubbles. And we're going to take a quick peek. And probably the first thing that we're going to look at is that big fuse block that we replaced in the previous video, which I will put the link to that right up here in the corner if you want to go watch out and find what happened to Bubbles when we lost heat the first time. So, let's get things moved around. So like I said before, the very first thing that I wanted to check was this pig right here. Flashlight doesn't work very well. This is our little get up for when we lost the heater the first time the two white wires that are coming up into the fuse panel were corroded so bad that it lost connection. So we got that all fixed up, but I looked down in there and it looks as though it may have blown that fuse. So we're gonna find another one of these little uh, circuit breakers and pop it in there and see what happens. So if I take a look at the fuse legend here, it tells me that this top right 40 amp fuse is for the ABS. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna swap it to see if that fixes it, and if it does, then we know that we've got to find one of these little 40 amp fuses. Now we'll just 
put that little patented lock back on there, make sure everything stays in place. And now we'll go inside and see what we got. So that was the problem. The question is, what caused it? There's no more being drawn off that fuse than there was previous before we fixed it. So this is something we're gonna to have to keep an eye on. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy a couple of these fuses so that I still have ABS brakes, but if it ever happens again, I know it's just a quick fix. So thankfully we have heat again in bubbles and it was an easy fix and we don't have to worry about that anymore. So let's hope that that fuse lasts a little while longer this time. So on another note, I wanted to let you guys know that we finally have, as you saw the other day, uh, the Jeep Compass back in the shop and we are getting ready to put in the new replacement transmission for the second time. So I told you this story several times on the deal with this. It turned into a issue with the transmission. We replaced that transmission and that transmission was also bad. So the company that we bought that transmission from was kind enough to send us another one. And there it is, all $1,700 worth. Yesterday afternoon, we had it pushed into the garage here and uh, Tim started tackling away at getting everything all tore apart. So well, he's getting very, very close to dropping this down through. You'll see all the spare parts. You've got the air box and the computer and axles and the cross members and all that stuff and a tray full of tools. The goal is by the end of day today that we have the new, new er transmission back into this Jeep and we have it running so that we can get this thing on the lot. Finally, um, we've been sitting on this for a long time. So uh, just, you know, putting off, getting the transmission done and then we finally book some time off to do the transmission and well, the, that transmission is bad too. So we've got to do the job all over again. It, it sucks. Uh, but the company that we bought the transmission from is looking after us. Unfortunately, they're not looking after our labor. We've got to eat that. But at the end of the day, uh, we've got to get it done so that we can do something with it. We can't even, we can't even send it to the auction uh, with a bad transmission. We've tried. Believe me, we've tried. Uh, but as a non-runner, the, the top bid that we could get out of that thing was like 600 or 700 bucks. So it's worth a lot more than that, but the transmission's got to be working. So that, that's what we're going to do. Also, the Chevy Malibu is coming along quite nicely. Uh, we've got everything all cleaned up here, and uh, we've got four brand new snow tires ready to roll. The plastic rocker panel you see down here laying on the ground, um, but up here, we've got a new piece of metal all welded in uh, the way it should be to pass inspection, and of course, on both sides. So the last thing we should have to do to this thing to get it drivable and passing inspection is to get that windshield replaced so that'll be a job for the first of the week so if you guys recall back a few months ago when i was trying to sell the 14 nissan rogue the customer had a mercedes-benz that he wanted to trade in now with that mercedes-benz it's a very limited market so i was reluctant to take it but i used some online resources to try and get that thing pre-sold before we did that deal with this mirage i did the same thing so what I do with this program, I'm gonna show you a little bit about what it does. Now, I've got three different companies that I deal with and they all operate basically the same way. So what I can do is I can take my phone and I can go around and take pictures and add descriptions and history reports and all that sort of thing right on this device and upload it to the site. And again, I'm not sure how well you're seeing this here, but it gives all the information, who is selling it, and uh, as you scroll down through the vehicle, everything is there and uh, we can set a minimum bid. Now, obviously, because this has just started, we have a minimum bid of a whole 50 bucks. As little as that sounds, it will grow. It's only been online now for about uh, five minutes. So it stays on there, I believe, for a couple of hours and uh, with this particular company. And then it will just continue to grow as people become interested in the vehicle or disinterested and gives me a value on where I think I should be as far as the trade-in goes. 
So I've already had this up on one website and I've got a figure. I'm hoping maybe I can get a few more dollars out of it on this one. Otherwise, we may decide just to keep it, get it cleaned up and put it on the lot. Either way, it does have to be cleaned up. So Junior's here today. So we're hoping that maybe we can get it in, get it vacuumed up and uh, get a wash job so it can sit on the lot for the weekend. And we did get our cheaper cars all rearranged here. And the idea is, is that we are going to be able to have on display several vehicles for sale under 10,000 bucks. So here you see five of them. We've also got a couple over here. So we've got the 16 Elantra and the 13 Dodge Dart that will be able to go over there as well. Not to mention the 2012 Malibu that Junior's working on cleaning up right now. How's it coming, Junior? Good. Looking good. So guys, I know I was all over the place with this video, working on bubbles and updates on cars and all, just all over the place. But it's, uh, it's kind of how things work sometimes when you're in the car business, your priorities change on a, almost a half, every half hour or on an hourly basis. And uh, you just kind of got to roll with the punches. But nevertheless, um, I want to give a big shout out to a fella who is a faithful follower of my channel. And uh, he's right here in St. Stephen. And uh, Joel, he stopped by today and he asked me if he could buy an old car auto guy t-shirt. So he gave me the money. I'll pick one up and I'll bring it to work with me on Monday. Joel, thank you so much for reaching out and wanting to support the channel. Uh, I know that you watch my videos and, uh, and I want to thank you for doing so. And thank everybody else who's ordered t-shirts in the past. I know I've shipped some out already. And if you guys want more, I can hook you up. My information is in the description box below, or you can go to the first link in the description box to bonfire.com and order it for your very self. The contest is still on. If you are a subscriber, you will qualify for a $1,000 giveaway. The catch is we've got to reach 1,000 subscribers before January 31st. So if you haven't done it yet, consider hitting that red subscribe button down below so you can get entered into that contest and be entertained by everything that we have to offer. Guys, once again, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate everything. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I'm off to a Christmas party. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next upload.